I avoid this stuff because I have pathological demand avoidance and the demands feel like threats. I am so happy that Demi is talking about this because there is so much to say about pathological demand avoidance. Now, avoiding demands of our everyday life is a normal human trait. We've all experienced it at some point, but for people with autism or a dysregulated nervous system, this is something that actually impacts their daily functioning. In order to understand this, let's start by looking at what even are demands in the first place. Because oftentimes we think of the word demand as someone requiring something of us, which as you see here, requests orders that is within this chart, right? There's also things here like laws, social rules, and wants and needs. So you can think of it as anything that requires us to expend energy in a way that may not be preferable to us at that time. So a good example of this would be if you wake up and you're really hungry, but you're just not in the mood to make food. That becomes a demand. As well, eating is a basic human need. It becomes a stressor at that time because it's not where that person wants to spend their energy. So I hope that's making sense. Now let's take a look at this chart. So Demi said it beautifully when she said demands feel like threats because that is actually what is happening. People with pathologic demand avoidance are moving really quickly through this chart. As you see on the side here, it says escalation can be really rapid, especially if pushed. So there's a small window of tolerance here from calm and able all the way up to fight or flight. So because for people with PDA, demands equal fight or flight, what's happening to your nervous system is it's going, okay, there's an external stressor we need to focus on, which is a threat to our survival. As silly as that could sound to some, people with PDA would view doing the dishes, for example, as a literal threat to their survival. And it's not logical. It's not like people with PDA are sitting there going, oh, I, this is a threat to my survival. It's just a nervous system response. As it stems from the idea that there is something being demanded of me, and if I don't meet that demand correctly, my threat or my safety is in jeopardy. That's where we can see up the chart, you know, then people start to use distraction. Sometimes they even withdraw into like fantasy lands, video games, TikTok. And then usually there's this period of time here where the action actually is getting done, but it's in this heightened state of arousal. I don't know about you, but I have definitely cleaned my house from like a panic state of being before. And usually that doesn't end well because usually if someone says something to me while I'm doing that, there will be an argument and that is the fight or flight. So how do we manage this? Number one, it's about understanding it and it's about understanding it to a point where you're able to use some validating self-talk to say, hey, this is my PDA at play. It is not because I'm lazy. It is not because I'm unmotivated and it's not because I'm a bad person. Number two, it's all about grounding and safety because at the root of this, it's about feeling unsafe when demands are placed on us. So that might mean using some affirmations and asking yourself, why am I safe right now? It might mean doing some breathing exercises, some other grounding exercises like a 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Number three, coupling sensory regulation with the activity or the demand. So if you have like, you know, Demi in her video had a, a squishmallow she loves. So using the squishmallow, holding it, regulating yourself with it, maybe while you're starting to clean the house or using it before and after as kind of a grounding tool. And lastly, four, one of the most important things, and this kind of comes back to my earlier point of validating, it's reminding yourself of that fear you feel that fight or flight response is really rooted in feeling unsafe. Reminding yourself of something like I have always kept myself safe and I will continue to do so can be very powerful. Thank you, Demi, for continuing to share your story.